Universe and welcome to the review of the past two weeks in Austria and in Germany and yes uh, it's gonna be like that now for that I might uh, do not every week a review video for certain leaks uh, which of this video is part of it but might actually go on a two week written to not have too many videos happening but you know I'll try to do it as frequently as I can but I missed of course because I had COVID and there was no way that last week uh, uh, last week on Monday I could have made a video you may have seen turn the page or uh, turning the page is the title of the video and uh, that's very much for Lusk uh, who yesterday had the biggest win of the season but you know it's all it's in the low end uh, playoff group in Austria which basically means yeah uh, you can get now wipe the page clean you did not qualify for the top six you're now in the bottom seven you still have a chance to qualify for Europe um, and now it's just moving on hopefully uh, but because of all that I mean if it was just on that result alone I might have worn a Lusk jersey um, but given that we're talking three games of Lusk in total not quite there I also have to say again uh, the format of uh, the league is just so mad that uh, we have major changes already after the first playoff round because everything gets squished together. You take the points, you slash them in half, and then uh, in the first result, suddenly we have Austria Vienna, who were now working near, had a good season, but nowhere near second place, suddenly they're in second place. So I'm actually, it shows me that I am bugged. Um, in Germany, we also had a few interesting results. Chief of this is uh, Kern, yes. They also lost and they won one, but winning at Leverkusen for, for, for me uh, does the trick. Um, but I think the big story in Germany is that I think Hertha Berlin are in real trouble of going down. Uh, it looks very, very, very likely at this moment for a huge club like Hertha, a club that actually want to boost themselves to the next level to compete for at least Champions League uh, again. An absolute disaster what this club is going through and kind of adds itself neatly in a row of big German teams that are in trouble. It started with Hamburg, HSV, uh, it is going, you know, Werder Bremen, Schalke, now we have Hertha. Um, I think all these teams need a major, major rebuild and it definitely doesn't help that the uh, uh, big champs in the league uh, so dominant overall, which I think is a little bit hampering the competition or making the comp competition a little bit too ambitious too quickly to spend much money. Uh, I think that's a major problem in, Ger in, in Germany. Yes, the competition needs to rise up to the level of Bayern, but Bayern have such a head start that usually needs major investment and then you need the right people. And I think all these clubs that I've mentioned before never really had the right people. Uh, at least in the past few years. Uh, speaking of the big champions up there, yeah, they have been faltering. They had two draws in a row. Might we get a title race? Well, we don't quite know yet. I don't think we will because uh, Dortmund is just too, absolutely too unpredictable. But I would say, uh, let's go first back to um, Austria and quickly the ending of the uh, regular season, if you like where um, Lusk got eliminated already on the 2nd of March, so um, the Wednesday uh, before for this Popos Pong game because Salzburg was full of COVID. Yes, they could pull out the team uh, and gave it their all against Lusk. Lusk had a really good performance, but I just could not score. I um, also has to say, uh, the other game had two mega chances that he needs to put back. But overall, this was a really uh, positive performance by Lusk. Everyone said this was not the reason why they didn't make it. Yes, this was the result that actually sealed the deal. Lask needed a win there that sealed the deal. The Lask will not make it into the top six. But at that point, they already needed help. And I don't think they would have gotten the... Uh, uh, I know they wouldn't have gotten the help anyway. So in, any, in the end, it was a moot point. There was actually high drama for this uh, top six spots because, you know, with Lask eliminated, it was a one, uh, one of uh, Austria Vienna, uh, Rapid, Klagenfurt and Ried was about to be left out. And Austria Vienna got the 2-1 win at Admira Wacker. Uh, Rapid Vienna against Klagenfurt was basically a direct, uh, you know, head-to-head -head where Rapid actually really steamrolled uh, the Corinthians. 
uh, which opened the door for Reed, who just needed a win against Sturm Graz, and they twice had the lead. But very late on, Sturm Graz uh, could equalize. They twice equalized, but the last, the last one came uh, within the last few few minutes of, of the game. And I have to say, that all, despite Reed being the rival, I actually felt a little bit sore, sorry for them. But on the flip side, uh, it means that the qualification group, as it's called, it should be called relegation group, uh, is for Lask not uninteresting because you still have the derby and something to play for Lask losing, of course, the last game at Wal 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 after having a very good first half and then a very bad second half. Um, and then the start for the playoff round, as I said, Lask got the biggest win of the season with a 6-0 yesterday against Tirol, a game that could it could have been higher. Uh, this was for the first time that uh, they not only convert their chances, but uh, actually the pressure uh, is really in their fav in the favor uh, that they're putting and uh, Tyrol had next to no chance. There was especially a period uh, at the end of the um, first half where, I mean, it was very quickly 2-0 uh, um, in the 26th and for, in, in the, for the first flag flag, it makes it 3-0 and they could have scored uh, seconds after and then they were, were pressing, it should have been 4-0 at the halftime at that point. So, a uh, rather convincing per performance and paired with a loss by Reed to Admira Vaca, actually meaning that Lask is already in first, first place, they were the favorites to get there. So, uh, things, things, things are looking up, they could make it to the uh, Europa Conference League playoff um, the league wide and then you have to of course qualify via the players for the Conference League uh, and as I already said in the championship round both Vienna teams got off to a good start and uh, it's very interesting because uh, Rapid just played Klar Klangfurt, so they played now in Klangfurt, won easily 3 of 3 and then Austria Vienna just uh, 3 weeks ago or 2 weeks ago Played against Wolfsburg at home, uh, you know, where uh, Lokos really saved the life of Tiger by pull pulling out, out, out at the time. They met, of course, ahead, ahead of the game. Tiger is feeling a lot better. Um, emotional scenes there. Austria Wiener winning that one. Uh, and that win paired with the loss of Sturm Graz to Salzburg uh, means that Aust Austria Wiener move all the way up to second spot, which is something that no one, no one expected there. But uh, We'll have half have They have to play Rapid next, which is, of course, the biggest game out there. And Salzburg has a Wolfsburg uh, double because they play first in the cup away to Wolfsburg. And then uh, same fixture on Saturday. Uh, and Wolfsburg basically needs to hit back there as well. And probably Sturm Graz might uh, end up in second place after that round. Lask has to go to Hartberg. Done with Austria we are. Let's move on to Germany where also we have to see, uh, we have two rounds to talk about. I mean the one is that Mainz um, had to postpone two games by, for, for Covid which is something that's really hard to do in Germany. Uh, this season these are the first games that have been postponed and if we have in the upcoming, upcoming week that the Mainz game against Dortmund will be played. Uh, the big one between, between Bayern and Leverkusen, uh, Bayern actually very dominant at the, at, at the beginning taking the lead but then Leverkusen coming back to get an equalizer still in the first half and then even having chances to take, take, take the lead again. Or I think it was a fair 1-1. Hartford 1-1 one, one also between Leipzig and Freiburg. Freiburg sticking up there. I don't think they will make a Champions League spot because uh, Le Leipzig is really getting going. But that was a pretty um, hard fought point for Fre Freiburg. They are not out of the running yet. And uh, it needed Leipzig. I mean, the first half it was all Freiburg. Second half Leipzig much better. They get their equalizer, but it was in there. Also a huge result in relegation uh, in that round, so uh, in the first March round, with Augsburg winning at Bielefeld, which basically relieves Augsburg for the moment and puts Bielefeld in danger, because Stuttgart, with a huge comeback win at Gladbach, might climb slowly out there. They were dominating the game and still found themselves down 2-0. Uh, to Gladbach, who with two chances scored, which is so on Gladbach for, for this season. But just before they have Stuttgart pulled one back, and then late uh, in the sec uh, in the second half, they turned it around to a deserved victory. And I think this was a, a pretty impressive result overall. I gotta say, so uh, really good. Uh, this made me quite happy. Not so happy that Hoffenheim won at Köln, but you know, so be it. And as I said, Hertha losing at home to Frankfurt big, and that already uh, gave them some trouble. Then uh, actually Freiburg doubled down and I think Fre it's over Freiburg who had the best um, 
two week uh, period with a 3-2 win uh, over Wolfsburg, Hartford, Hoffenheim and Bayern in a wildly entertaining game, play out a 1-1 one, one draw, Bayern again dropping points and uh, Dortmund then yesterday get their 1-0 win over Bielefeld, so uh, meaning we may have a title race and we'll never get there because Dortmund will falter eventually. Um, Stuttgart keep up their good form, they're gaining points. I really hope that Stuttgart will get out of there. Um, I don't have much hope for Hertha, uh, which hurts a little bit because I think Hertha is a team that also would below, uh, belong up there. Köln uh, in probably the, you know, Leverkusen is more, I don't want to say a suburb, it's their own city, but uh, it, it's right next to Köln, so it's it's more or less a derby. Uh, but this was the least colorful derby ever, because usually both of these are red, red and white, but Leverkusen in their very special sea city jerseys, but in gray and black against Köln in all black. Uh, look a little bit uh, weird, but Kern with a wonderful goal winning that one. I uh, absolutely love that one, that goal. Um, we also had Frankfurt beating Bochum and as I said Bielefeld uh, losing uh, to Dortmund. Ma uh, Maris Wolf scoring there, the, the, the winners of Dortmund kind of clawing themselves a little bit back. Uh, and Leipzig despite finding themselves down 1-0 to Kreuterfurt winning their 6-1. Kreuterfurt, as I said, it's a foregone conclusion that they are going down. It's all about the final uh, spots coming up. Uh, if I just look at the standings at the moment, uh, it is really Bayern, Bayern, Bayern. Although, you know, the gap is now seven points. It should uh, Dortmund win. It's only four points. It's still a long way. It's hard It's hard for me to see Bayern not winning this title. Uh, but it's more in the entry for the last Champions League spot where Leipzig is in pole position, but it's still 44 points. Leipzig, 44, Freiburg, 44, Hoffenheim. Köln might get into the Conference League. There's a tussle with Union Berlin and Frankfurt. So I think uh, that will be interesting. And on the bottom at, at, at the moment, Augsburg only 77%. Augsburg, look at the moment. Yes, only three points. Look a little bit safe. Also Gladbach with a win uh, over Hertha. Put some distance now. They had seven points to the relegation spot and seven points to Hertha. So it's a big uh, win for, for them as well. So Gladbach might actually survive this season. Um, so, But I think the ones that are really implicated are Bielefeld with 32%, Stuttgart with 34%. But you know, uh, this is to the relegation stage and Hertha really, really look, look bad with 65%. Although they're level on points with Stuttgart, but Stuttgart moving out there again and let's see uh, who will go in there. Will it be Bielefeld, will it be Stuttgart, uh, maybe Augsburg can go in there. I don't think that for instance a team like Bochum at 32 points, um, you know, the relegation spot 23, will get in there at the, at the moment. But Bielefeld, uh, even Augsburg uh, is a little bit iffy and especially when we look at upcoming matches, um, Augsburg have to play away to Stuttgart, pretty big one. Bielefeld have to play away to Mainz. It's also not an easy one in Bochum against Gladbach. I mean, basically, a draw, I think, will suit both of them well. Uh, I think the big one is Köln against Dortmund uh, next weekend because that is a game that could very well suit uh, Köln to get a point of another big team. So, yeah, that was it for me for... Uh, the past two weeks from the Bund Bundesliga, uh, it's interesting, I have to say, especially when I look in Germany at the relegation uh, point spots. Um, and uh, also, also, I think in Austria, the a tussle for the second Champions League spot is also not uninteresting because there are quite a few teams in there. In any case, please let, let me know what you thought about the happenings this league. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!